a little early today, probably about two hours ago, I went live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time using this new uh, software I have, and it didn't really go well. The, uh, the picture looked terrible, so I went ahead and deleted them from YouTube and all of my Facebook pages that I'm launching this to, my private page and my Arizona Timeless Tours page. So this is like a second take. I know we're not going to get a lot of people in here tonight, so I'm not going to wait around, especially for those who are going to watch it at a later time. But again, not deja vu. We are. I'm going to do the same thing I did about two hours ago live on YouTube and Facebook. The, uh, the video turned out absolutely terrible. I'm hoping that it looks better now. Um, I did learn that those of you who are watching on my Facebook page, the Arizona Timeless Tours, I will not, not be able to see your comments. So if you're on, unfortunately, with this software here and uh, how Facebook uses it, I can stream to it, but I cannot see your comments. So that kind of stinks. But I will go back and read the comments if you leave them in the Facebook page. Those that are watching on YouTube, I should be able to, uh, to bring up your comments here uh, when you start posting them. So what are we going to talk about? Again, hopefully this, this video looks good right now and it's not all blurry. All right, we're going to talk about spring training, the Cactus League. Um, there is a hidden secret to the Cactus League here in the great state of Arizona, and that's what I want to get to. Before I went live, I went and looked up a few of the ticket prices to all of these different uh, arenas around here. And uh, right now, your average ticket price is $75 for a lawn seat. So if you were taking family and friends to see spring training, you were, you're going to be paying a minimum of $75 a piece for a lawn seat. Now, the reason that is, is because we're going through the pandemic right now. And I guess we should just be happy that they are letting 2,200 people per um, stadium into watch the spring training games, which is great. Uh, it is. But for those of us that go every year, if we weren't in on that first uh, phone call to get those tickets, especially for the Arizona Diamondbacks who sold out in less than two hours, they sold out the whole uh, spring training worth of tickets. Now you can go on these second and third places to go and try to pick them up, but you're going to pay a lot of money to get these tickets. So what I'm going to tell you today is we're going to go over the ticket cost, but the hidden gem, you're going to have to take advantage of it in 2022 because this year, what I'm going to talk about is not available to the public. It has been for the nine years I've been going to spring training, and I'm sure it's been going a lot longer than that. But uh, because of the restrictions to the spring training facilities and the few people that can actually go watch a spring training game, the information I'm going to give you tonight, you want to take advantage of that in 2022. So you got people coming in from out of town, out of state, coming from Cleveland. Ohio to watch the Cleveland Indians in Goodyear. You'll want to stick around and 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 understand why actually going to the game and spending all that money isn't really where you're going to see all the action. Now I'll take you back. I got uh, to my first spring training game in Goodyear in March of 2012. When I went there in March of 2012, I paid $22.50 for a ticket to the game. Uh, and now, since now nine years later, the ticket prices has they have absolutely skyrocketed. There we got Chad Campbell, love Chief Wahoo. Good to see you on here, Mr. Chad. Um, new software update here. So this is just a this is just a practice. But anyhow, so people, you know, I, I've been out there, I've seen the game, but the ticket prices are absolutely they're, they're inflated unbelievably. And that's during a regular time when we're not going through the pandemic. But right now for the Diamondback, it's $65 for a lawn seat. Uh, I went on a secondary site and there were 12 tickets left for lawn seat tickets only. Then I checked out the San Diego Padres and the uh, versus the San Francisco Giants. Now, any other time of year, 
a San, a San, uh, San Diego Padres ticket would be one of the easiest tickets to come by. But because now they're, they're loaded with stars and everybody knows the name of everybody on that team, I went and looked it up. The cheapest ticket, and there were seven tickets left to this game, I believe on March the 5th, was $98. And uh, the highest ticket was 107 and just a few tickets to go and see that. Now, during uh, when the pandemic isn't around, I do believe that those tickets will be a high price because of the names that are on the Padres, just like the Cubs and the Dodgers. Those tickets are always expensive. I have a, a few friends that are going uh, next week out to see the Cubs game. And uh, when they opened their tickets, they got their tickets, I believe, for $85 a piece for the lawn. $85 a piece for the lawn. And the Cubs and the Dodgers are always sold out. And the Diamondbacks are pretty close to being sold out all the time. So what is the hidden secret? What should you do in 2022 instead of spending all your money at the ballpark for three hours? Consider you, you might have three kids. So you take three kids and yourself. You go there. You buy some merchandise. Uh, you buy uh, some hot dogs and some popcorn and some drinks. Uh, you pay $20 to park your car, and then you leave. You're spending hundreds of dollars at spring training. The secret is don't do that. The secret is go to the practices. And, I would, and people are like, practice? Why would I go to practice? Well, the spring training practices across the valley open at about 9 a.m., all, um, all the parks. And most of them stay open to 1230 or 1 p.m. So you got three or four hours that you can go in there. Now, you can bring food, put it in your car. It's free to park. It's free to get in. You put your food in the car so when you get hungry or thirsty, you can bring water into the park, but nothing else. You take the kids or go out with your buddies and you eat at the car and then you come right back in. Now, what can you see at the practice? Well, first of all, here's the, the pros to that. You'll see all of the players out there for the next four hours on six to seven different fields practicing. If you go to a game, you don't know if the, the player that you're going to watch is even going to participate in the game at all. I looked at the first two games of the Diamondbacks. First game, we had one starter play. The second game, we had two starters play. They're out in Cleveland in Goodyear today, and from what I've seen, it looks like the only starter was our first baseman. That was it. So I don't know if anybody came in later. But uh, so you're paying in $65 to $70 to sit on the lawn to watch guys that you've never heard of, guys who have no names on their back of their shirts because they're trying to make the team. Just a, just a quick one. I would suggest after going for the last nine years, if you were going to a game, a spring training game, the best time to go is the second and third week of March. That's when most of your starters are going to play three, four plus innings. Uh, that's it. Uh, the first two games in February, not so good. But I will say I turned on the Cubs game today and saw that, man, probably about 50% of the Cubs team, the starters were in for the first three innings. So that's what that's pretty cool. But I don't see that with the Diamondbacks. I don't see that with the Indians. I don't see that with some of the other teams that I follow. So you go to the, the practices. You're seeing all the players warming up. And then you see the pitchers go their separate ways. You see the catchers go their separate ways. And uh, the position players go to another field. Now, if you're a big fan of a certain player, you can follow him for the next four hours to each one of those fields and watch them take grounders, watch them hit, um, watch them run through drills. You can see them the whole time, or you can check out a bunch of different guys and for the rest of the time that you're there, you can watch batting practice. You can, you are almost guaranteed. Like when you go to a, a regular game, you're, the, the odds of you getting a foul ball or a ball from there are not very good. If you go to the practices, your odds of getting a foul ball, especially as a kid, are really good. As many balls as they hit, foul and over the fence. And then you have uh, some security people that are there that can go to the opposite side where these balls are coming down that I've seen. And they hand the balls out to the kids. 
So to get a ball is is I would say is almost 50-50 at uh, at the uh, at the practice facility, and it's just about zero percent at a game. All right. If you want to get an autograph, your chances of getting an autograph at the practice field after the practice is done, not bothering on them when they're going from field to field. What most people don't understand is these guys are on a timeline. They, when they're going from one field or one drill to the next, they don't have time to stop and sign a baseball card or have a chat with you. But if you wait to the end of the practice when these guys are heading in, a lot of them will stop, especially for the kids. And I say that again, especially for the kids, they will sign their cards, their baseballs. They're pretty good at doing that. Unfortunately, we get the autograph hounds who are there with the big, thick books with you know 500 cards in it, 10 cards per page of the same player that they want this player to sign all these cards. That ruins it for everybody. These guys always ruin it for everybody. These players do not want to sign these books for these older gentlemen. So, uh, but kids... You're, you're, you're more likely to get an autograph and you're more likely to get a, um, a ball and you're, you're going to see there's about a hundred percent chance that you're going to see your favorite player uh, on all of these fields for the next three and a half to four hours in practice. You, when you go to a game, again, you don't know if your favorite player is going to play. Uh, a foul ball is just sheer luck. And if you've been to a spring training game, which I have been to many in the last nine years, if you see the autograph hounds there, they get there extremely early. They don't move from their seats. They don't move from actually the seats that they're occupying that they did not pay for. They have to be moved by the ushers. They have to be moved by security just so kids can get down to the seats that mom and dad pay for so they can try to get an autograph. And it, it really chases the players away from going to that area. So it's not a good time to try to get an autograph at the actual game. So there's so many pros, and, and I can't even think of a con that you would you definitely want to go to the practice. It's going to cost you $0 to park. It's going to cost you no money to get in, and you're going to see everything. You're going to see everything. And one of the great things is if you have a young individual who's into baseball, well, you can actually go and you can hear the coaches teach. So that's one of the things I love to listen to is to, li to, to see these guys teach these double and triple A guys, but also to have them teach the gold glovers that are on that uh, particular team. I see it all the time. Gold glovers being taught just something else that they might not have known. And if you're listening and you have a young one that's maybe a shortstop or maybe a catcher, well, you can follow the shortstops and catchers around while they're doing their drills and, you know, learn from the best. You can't do that at a game. No. So the secret is, and you're going to, again, have to do it in 2022, because unfortunately, because of what we're going through right now, all the practices are closed for the first time ever. All the practices are now closed. And, you know, we got 2,200 people per game going to the games. But uh, starting next year, just if you're coming in from out of town, uh, if you got people um, coming in from other states, coming to visit, and they just come for spring training games, my family does this. They come for spring training games. We sit through about six and a half innings before we decide that we're going to get up to beat the 10,000 other people that are in the crowd out. So we spent $20 to park for six and a half hours. We spent a bunch of money on food and drinks. And uh, they buy a few uh, shirts or stuff, hats from there. Lots of money being spent for six and a half, seven innings. And most spring training baseball games, especially this year, we're really only going seven full innings, but then they have the option of going eight. So they'll never go nine innings during spring training. So again, lots and lots of reasons not to actually go to a spring training game. Now, I think everybody should go in and check a game out in their life, you know, but you don't have to go to two, three, four, five spring training games a year. If you want to see action, you want to go to the three and a half to four hour practices they have, you'll get so much more access to the players, folks. And the kids, they they get they get an opportunity to get way a lot closer. 
You don't have to be down in the first row of seats at a game. They can sit in those bleachers and see those guys. And most of those guys, to be honest, with the kids, they interact with them. I've seen it in Oakland at the Oakland Athletics uh, facility in Mesa uh, a couple of years ago when I did a YouTube video out there. They interacted with the kids. Unbelievable. They gave them balls. They signed autographs while they were waiting to take batting practice. Another, uh, you know, a time for another video will be understanding, you know, uh, professional athletes and what they have to do to train for 162 game season to go for seven to eight months straight with just a couple of days off here and there to understanding their way of life and their way of thinking, and then understanding what the fan thinks. Um, I have a great perspective on that that I'm going to share in about another month or two, because I think that if the fan would understand what the athlete is going through, no matter how much money he's making, you know, and then the athlete will understand the fan a lot better. And I think that going through last year, what we did, the athletes do respect the fans a lot more because they lost a lot of money without any fans in the stands. So lots to talk about on baseball. But um, I'm seeing that Chad Campbell was the only one that seemed to have left a message up here. We had a few people in the live. Didn't expect a lot of people in here because I didn't publish this at all. But uh, the first time I went live, it was an absolute, it, it was a disaster. The video looked terrible. So uh, hopefully this video does not look terrible. Hopefully it sounds right. I'll go check it out after I uh, finished here and uh, make sure it looks good. And then I'll load it up to YouTube and to all my social media outlets so people can watch it later. Not the best time to go live on a Wednesday night at like 9 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. But uh, that's going to be it. You got any questions, let's leave them. I'll leave a comment over on Facebook. You can leave a comment. Leave a comment on YouTube. I will answer all the comments. Um, that's all I got. Anybody, uh, I'll stand here for just a second if anybody's out here. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok that you can see there below. One of the great things I like about the new software is you can change the, the bottom and stuff like that. Like, you know, we're talking spring training, baseball in Arizona. And uh, one day I'll get my little logo up in the right-hand corner. And uh, then you can do stuff like this. Chad is still on here. We can stick Chad's thing right there. Boom. There's uh, Chad Campbell's love and chief Wahoo comment down there that, uh, you know, some people like that comment. Some people don't like that comment. But um, a lot of great things we can do uh, with this new software. Hopefully, um, the next the next video I'm actually going to do is we're going to look at each spring training facility. Take the Diamondbacks. I'll give you one for free right now. Take the Diamondbacks. If you go to Salt River Field, which is, I believe, the best spring training facility in the Cactus League and in the Grapefruit League. It's better than anything in Florida. It's better than anything in Arizona. The uh, It's won awards since 2011 as the best spring training facility that there is. Um, it's absolutely, if you haven't had an opportunity to get out there, if you're coming in from out of town, next year you definitely want to check out uh, the practice fields and a game at Salt River Fields. It's probably a lot easier for you to get a Rockies ticket than a Diamond, Diamondbacks ticket. But what they have out there that opened in March of 2001, and it was open for a month before this pandemic hit, what is the USS Arizona Memorial at Salt River? This thing is, is pretty awesome. Uh, me uh, and my friend that actually has joined us tonight, uh, we got in there when it first opened. I uh, got a couple of t-shirts and some hats, some food, uh, but it's, an, it's a pretty awesome memorial. The inside has been closed, but you don't need to get inside to enjoy the memorial. You can just walk around the outside. They have um, all the information posted on the outside. You can see at the inside the boathouse uh, that they have a piece of the boathouse, which was one of which was part of the original USS Arizona Memorial before what you see there today. But I want to do some hidden gems throughout these ballparks, and that's one of them. So Salt River Fields, you go out there in the parking lot of Salt River Fields is the brand new USS Arizona Memorial, 
even though the inside is closed due to COVID, the outside is still opened. That's the main part. And the inside, you can see the boathouse uh, through the glass windows. And hopefully soon it will be opening up for the public as we uh, as we move forward in uh, out of this uh, out of this pandemic time. But uh, I plan on going over uh, to Goodyear and talk about the Indians and uh, the Red Stadium. What is around there to see after you enjoy a practice or a game out there? There is an awesome place in Mesa across the street from where the Oakland Athletics train. We'll tell you about a hidden gem over there. We'll talk to you about a hidden gem over by the San Francisco Giants Stadium in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, out there in where the Dodgers are training in Glendale. Lots of great hidden gems. So my next video is going to be on that. I'm going to choose probably eight of these stadiums. We'll choose eight awesome locations that you need to go and check out after you check out a practice or a game. And uh, there, again, there are some unbelievable places, folks, that surround these ballparks that most people have no idea. Even locals have no idea that they're there. So I look forward to bringing that to you. I'll probably bring that to you either Friday night or Saturday night, sometime around 8 or, eight or 9 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Uh, we'll bring you that. But uh, that's all I got. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, MeWe, and LinkedIn. If you want to check me out on any other social media outlets, I'm going to upload a podcast tomorrow tomorrow afternoon probably. Uh, it's on the same subject, uh, Hidden Secrets to Spring Training in the Cactus League here in Arizona. So check that out. Podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify. Anchor, you can find a pocket cast. There is it's on every podcasting platform. Just type in the Arizona Timeless Tours. Let me go here and make sure I don't miss anybody in the chat that can actually put something on here. And we do have some people on here. We got uh right here. Jaden says, Love your TikTok videos. I appreciate that. TikTok being one of the best platforms I've ever been on. We've been on TikTok for eight months now. 50, over 57,000 subscribers or followers, you should say, and over 11 million total views on TikTok after eight months. It takes out my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, I'll tell you that. Uh, all right, then. I appreciate everybody stopping by to stop by. Uh, it's great this time because people actually left comments and that helped me out because again, we're using some brand new software tonight. So that helped out uh, these two comments by Chad and uh, was that Jaden? I appreciate everybody uh, that follows. Hopefully uh, this sounds good and looks good. And I look forward to uh, getting back on here, telling you about these hidden gems around these ballparks on Friday or Saturday, look for it. But I'll definitely be uploading it in case you miss it. I'll upload it to YouTube and all of my Facebook accounts. Take care.